defense, as we have been in the last three or four years, or as we were before September 11, when we took the hit at the coal and didn't strike back, and we were hit in East Africa and struck back, but very meekly. When you do that, you invite the kind of attacks we're getting now. And I don't know if you realize it, but they really are beginning to expand exponentially. We've had four massive attacks in less than a year, right? Santa Barbara, Brussels, Paris, and now this tragedy in a uh, horrible well, attack. But it's uh, even more than it's even more than that. In, in uh, the Philippines oh, this week, I, an ISIS uh, ISIS uh, affiliate beheaded a Canadian, Boko Haram in Africa. They're an course. ISIS uh, and, affiliate. And, and in France, uh, the, 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 the police officer and his wife who were knifed, and people are talking about gun control. I mean, so if they don't have a gun, they use a knife. If they don't have a knife, they use a bomb. If they don't use, have a bomb, they use anthrax. If well, they don't use but, anthrax, they're going to use dirty bombs when uh, Iran starts to make nuclear material available to them, if Mar Iran isn't already making nuclear material available to them. So, I mean, the reality is that weakness in the face of this kind of um, insane religious ideology only breeds more attack. And all Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have been uh, from they started is weak. Uh, taking all of our troops out of Iraq, taking all of our troops out of Afghanistan, leaving nothing behind. Of course you weren't going to find out about the development of ISIS. There was nobody there to tell you about it. I mean, you have to be dumb not to figure out why this was a terrible mistake. So uh, now what, what would a President Trump do? Here's what I yeah. would advise him to do. Uh, number one, uh, he's absolutely right. You've got to face your enemy and call them what they are. It's Islamic extremist terrorism. That is, that is the philosophy behind the attack that went on in Orlando. And in this particular case, it was focused against a group of people that are considered enemies of fundamentalist extremist Muslims, gay and lesbian people. I mean, we've seen them throw homosexual men off buildings. They've, sh they've sent us pictures of it just to show us how much they hate people that are gay and, uh, and, and lesbian. So that adds an extra dimension to it. But this is, this is very similar to when they take a group of Christians and chop their heads off. If you're a Christian, you're an infidel. If you're a gay and a lesbian, you're an infidel. If you're a Jew, you're an infidel. If you're not their kind of fundamentalist uh, Muslim and a Muslim, you're an infidel, and they'll chop your head off. And then, and, then, and then he's got to put boots on the ground. I, I don't want to hear ever again, no boots on the ground. I don't want to hear that. Uh, well, he talks, about, he talks about two things that, that I hear. Number one is he talks about a ban on Muslims, which, look, you know, there are Muslims you, serving in our military who are very you, fine you, men and women and loyal Americans. Then he talks about a wall, but, uh, but look at, the, look at the, uh, the vicious killer in Orlando. Right. He, he, it was, he got his inspiration over the Internet. The, the Internet isn't the blocked ban, by a wall. Uh, uh, the ban should be a ban on Muslims coming from countries in which there are uh, serious uh, threats to the United States, and uh, those people should only be allowed in, if at all, if, there, if there's a vetting process that the director of the FBI is comfortable with, and James Comey says he's not comfortable with the vetting process for people coming in uh, from particularly Syria in this particular case. But mainly, you're asking me about ISIS. The approach to ISIS has to be recognize who they are, what they are. And we have to commit not just bombings, but we have to commit troops to wiping them out. We should have done it five years ago. We need to create a no-fly zone in Syria. We've got to push Assad back. And we have to take those refugees and put them in Syria with a no-fly zone protected by the American uh, Air Force, the Amer American military, and everybody else who wants to join us. Look, the president of France was willing to do this two or three years ago. I was so embarrassed when the president of France wanted to take a more aggressive position with regard to Islamic extremist terrorism than the president. The president of France uses the words Islamic extremist uh, 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 terrorism. In fact, when the foreign minister of France used those words, the White House took it out of the tape. Uh, so we, we have something absurd going on here. Uh, you couldn't do worse than the policies of uh, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. And what we need is a president who is going to commit himself to wiping out ISIS. No timetable. Like the stupidity of the timetable we had in Iraq and Afghanistan. What war was ever fought on a timetable? Here's the timetable. When they stop threatening us.
Yeah, you know, I never, I never dreamed I would be saying something like this because I've fought for the First Amendment in the courtroom. But one of the means that has supplied oxygen to ISIS for both recruitment and inspiration has been the internet. It has been Facebook. It's been Twitter. And you know, we, these are private U.S. corporate, not private, public U.S. corporations. They're, they started here. Um, you know, is it not time for some leader to at least bring these group, these corporations, to try to figure out some way to shut yes. down yeah. that inspiration, okay. that recruitment? A, a President Kennedy or a President Reagan or President Bush or, or a president would have called them into the White House a couple of years ago and said, let's cut the... We don't, we don't need to tell anybody, but let's stop all... Well, what do you want to be? You want to be an instrument of murder, an instrument of killing? But honestly, that's not the root cause of the problem. The root cause of the problem is them. And if they don't communicate through... Those means they'll communicate through other means. Just, that just makes them more effective. We what have to wipe out ISIS. When, the, when, when Franklin Roosevelt declared war against Nazism, he didn't put a timetable on the war. The war was when they were defeated completely. When, uh, we, when uh, Abraham Lincoln went to war, it wasn't, you know, we're going to be in this war three years. It was, we're going to fight this war until the Union is kept together. This president what, doesn't understand. In World, in World War II, it was, you know, a number of nations that joined together to fight Hitler. Um, it, you know, it seems to me that to fight ISIS, it would be it would be very helpful if we had a real leader, a superpower to sort of, you know, get the other ones on board. I mean, from, um, President Hollande seems like he's quite willing, and President Cameron, they're both, uh, Prime Minister Cameron, quite willing. Who would be more likely to be respected by world leaders to try to help lead well, that? A President Clinton or a President Trump? Uh, president Trump, of course. I mean, she, she's the one who presided over the overthrow of, uh, of uh, Gaddafi in Libya. And look what we have in Libya. She reset